Hi, good afternoon everybody. Welcome to the inaugural episode of the Sabres Chronicles. This will be the episode on the channel that talks about today in history. I like to do history sometimes and you know what? I think I should have a segment on the channel, whether it be popular or not, that discusses the Sabres history because it's important. For me it is. I think uh, we should always be looking back at what our forefathers of this team has done and how they basically set the bar. Uh, you know, making the Stanley Cup Finals in 75 and or even making the finals again in 1999. So we should look at these things, talk about them, remember them. And I will go into, guys, let's just get going with this. This is, uh, let's go into the first clip before we get started. And yep, folks, that is the Montreal Forum as it was in the 1970s. And the reason why I'm showing you the form is because for those of you that are, that were born, let's say in the eighties or whatever, you didn't really know how bad it was to have to go into that building for the entire NHL during their dynasty years and having to play there. It was brutal. It was brutal. The Habs, in four years, lost 14 out of 160 games at home. This is how mighty they were once upon a time. So I'm going back to January the 5th, 1976. So let's go back in time. And we will look at clip number one. And you can see the record of the teams there. The uh, Habs were 27, six and six. The Sabres were 22, 11 and five after this game. But before the game, the Sabres were 20, uh, sorry, 21, 11 and five and the Habs were 27, five and six. The Sabres won this game four to two. We'll look at the box score. And the first period, Rick Martin opens it up from McNabb and Spencer. And the Sabres, to the shock of the Montreal crowd, Jacques Richard makes it 2-0 from Perot. And the Sabres are up 2-0 on the Mighty Habs in a building that they were 14-0-4 coming into this game. Steve Shutt makes it 2-1 from LaPointe and Jarvis. And in the third, the Habs, like they always do, come back, tie the game. Their tight checking line of Ganey and Jarvis tie it up shorthanded. Rick Martin scores again at 3.59 from Ramsey and Stanfield, and then Martin rounds it out with a hat trick from Peter McNabb and Bill Height to close out the game. And why I chose this as the day in, 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 our, in our history that's important are for a few reasons I wrote down here. So like I said during that clip, guys, the Habs were going into that game, they were 14-0-4 at home. And keep in mind, this is the beginning of their dynasty. This is the beginning. 75-76 was the first of their four consecutive cups. The Habs had a, a, a chip on their shoulder that Buffalo beat them the year before in the semifinals. And they were ready to beat the Sabres for sure. The Sabres came into this game. I got it written down here. We were 3-6-2, our last 11 games going into that game. So the Sabres showed up, as they did many times at the Forum, folks, many times. If there was anything I was very proud of as a Sabres fan in the 70s, even though we had a lot of playoff choking, I, I guess is the proper word, was that we were always good against Montreal. We were always good against them. Now, Rick Martin scored the hat trick, as you've seen there. In the four-year dynasty in Montreal, that was the only hat trick that Ken Dryden allowed on home ice the entire dynasty. That was it. That night. That was the only the only hat trick Dryden gave up. Darcy Rhoda, uh, Rhoda for Chicago scored a hat trick in the 1978-79 uh, season in Montreal. I think the score was 8-3. to three. They routed Montreal. But Montreal was started. Not, they still won the cup that year, but they were becoming human. And um, the uh, Darcy Rhoda that, uh, got the only other hat trick in the dynasty, but Bunny LaRock was in nets for Montreal, not, not Ken Dryden. Yeah, and as I said, in the Habs' four-year dynasty on their home ice, folks, they lost 14 out of 160 home games. Isn't that insane? 14 home losses in four years. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was a nightmare to live for me back then, guys. 
In this game, the Sabres outshot the Habs 35-26 for the win. Jerry Desjardins was in nets for the Sabres. He stopped 24 out of 26 to preserve the win. As the Sabres improved to 22, 11 and 5, snapping out of that 3-6 and 2 slump uh, coming in. It was their first slump since they had went to the Stanley Cup Finals. They started something like 18 and 3, whatever it was, 3-6. So they started 18 and 5, yeah. 18, 5 and 3, there it is. The Sabres look great. They started great the next year. They hit a slump in 75-76, 3-6-2, which I was kind of in shock, I remember, at the time. I thought they'd just roll all year. They didn't. Our all-time record, January the 5th, Buffalo Sabres record, is 8-8-2 eight, eight overall. Currently, we've lost our last five in a row on January the 5th, and of course, we're not playing this year, so we won't be able to snap that this year. We have not won since 2006, folks, on January the 5th. We've lost th those five in a row, and that was when we beat Tampa 3-2. to two. Uh, Sorry, 3-1 to one in that game. Now, I'm going to get ready to close out this video. But before we do so, let's take a look at former Buffalo Sabres birthdays, or current Buffalo Sabres birthdays as well. And here is the first clip. Yep, tough guy Kevin Maguire. Remember him in the 80s, guys? Tough guy Kevin Maguire when he just sucker punched, I believe it was Miller. Uh, <laughs> that Sabres-Bruins rivalry. Oh my goodness, that was something. I still remember it. I still remember it in that playoff series. I, I uh, Just good memories, guys. Good memories. Uh, Kevin Maguire is 60 today, if you can believe that, folks. Next birthday... Former Sabre for a very short time, Joe Juno, who was part of our 1998-99 run, should not be forgotten because he eliminated us the year before with Washington with his overtime goal in Game 6, but there's Joe Juno. As you see, he had played um, uh, 20 games, had three goals, eight assists in the playoffs for us that uh, playoff run. Next birthday, Mike Greer. Mike Greer turned 48 today. So we're going down. We're going from 60 to 55 to 48. Mike Greer, of course, has carved out, uh, he carved out a very, very decent NHL career, as we know. Played a big part in our 2005-2006 uh, squad, I thought, in that playoffs. Just seemed like every time he was out there, I was very secure. No goals would be scored against us. And he was excellent on the penalty kill as well. So happy birthday also to Mike Greer. And final birthday of the day. Zemgis Gergensens is 29 today. So happy birthday to all. All right, folks, that's it. That's it for the first episode of this segment on the channel. I'm going to be doing this, uh, I can't tell you every single day, but I do plan on doing these quite often because I believe, guys, our history is important. I just do. And I think we should not forget where we came from. We should not forget the players of our past, and we should appreciate where we've come from as well. All right, guys, see you in the next one.